Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. And that is the greeting, you know. And so many do not understand it. it. Sounds cryptic. It's supposed to. But the service that I give to humanity. isn't necessarily one that is magnetic <laughs> but that's how it started there are many like me I speak through my partner at this moment using his voice his consciousness again I tell you I use his filter as a human being the process of channeling must involve these things every time and the clearer his filter, the more you'll feel who I am. The more allowance he gives to the process, the clearer you'll see the creator inside. And so here we are again. This channeling experience this day will not be an endurance event. I want to make it long. I want to make it powerful. I want the energy of what is to be said here and the profundity of what is at hand to lay upon this group in the now. For I have chosen this place, which is Lemuria, to give an overview what is taking place at this moment on this planet. And those in the now are those who are reading these words. And those in the now are the ones listening to them, but not necessarily in the chairs. And so there are really three groups, and those groups are unending. For we speak now to those who are hearing this after the fact in linear time. To those who are reading this after the fact in linear time. And that could be therefore encompassing those reading this years from now. When the energy has shifted even greater than it has now. Some might be looking at this as a history lesson even as they hear these words and read them. And here you are, dear ones in the audience in front of me, known to me, hearing it for the first time. And so you might say, in a way, it becomes a quantum event. My partner alluded to this earlier today when he said that those things which you do now in the time that you consider now are projected into the potentials of what might happen around you next. Therefore, what you do now shapes a future that has not happened yet. But it changes the potentials to be. And that in itself changes a quantum state. loads the dice as they say and so this is the profundity of the shift that you are in at the moment and I want to talk about that and I want to put it into a perspective so you can see it perhaps you can feel what we do I want to take you to a place that I have taken you before Every single human being who hears and reads or is in the room is part of this. Even the ones who are just checking it out. The ones who perhaps have been asked to come or to listen or to read. 
You may not be aware of it, but there was a time when you were not a human being. You were a part of what we would call the creative energy. Some of you would call that even God. Whatever it means to you, this sacred energy which pervades the universe and has intelligence, you call spirit innate, was there when the earth was created and you were with it. And you watched this planet and all of its wonder be shaped. You were there when the magnetic grid was set in place. Not all planets have a magnetic grid. Some do, some do not. It depends upon how they are formed, the geology, the age, the heat inside. It had to be perfect this magnetic grid would eventually become the vehicle of communication right to your DNA. But before it could communicate anything to the DNA, the DNA had to have the spiritual complement in the creation that we talked about last night. But there you were with me watching this earth being created in linear time it took a lot of patience but in the now of a quantumness that you experience on the other side of the veil with me there was no patience needed there was no waiting needed it is what it is the clock does not tick as it does here it's different and you watched it with me life began five times and those historians who look at the earth and the creation of life and how it occurred the biologist are puzzled with that it started and stopped seeming even to destroy itself five times isn't it interesting that it kept trying and what does that tell you about the way nature works or what you call nature works it is the creative energy that won't say no for life was always the purpose on the planet and you could watch the universe push the envelope trying it again and again and again and again. And when finally all was well, with the balance of that creation, and photosynthesis was in place, to absorb that which was oxygen and carbon dioxide, those things were, were manufactured in a balance that would create a system of support for you. It began to take hold. And you watched. You were not impatient with any of it. And you all had a part, knowing full well that you would eventually come to this planet as human beings and you did all of these years and the history that you read in your books some of it correct some of it not brought you to a place where we would say currently and you find yourself sitting in a room in a place that was Lemuria place that we would call New Zealand there is harmony here there is beauty here there is purpose here and you are made aware through the channeling that perhaps you were brought here earlier than you thought in past lives perhaps you are your own ancestors perhaps some of you in the chair no matter what you look like now Participated literally in the first 
the first crops ever grown here, the first energy ever planted here, the first children ever born here. And the land knows you and you know the land. That is the possibility, is it not, of some of you. The vibration of the planet rose up and down. This was the work of the Mayans, to observe this, to look at the fractals of time that may support it. And it went up and down with the prediction for you are allied to Gaia and in this vibrational alliance you work together and each time it went up and down it increased and decreased proportionally you might even say waves of time created societies <coughs> beliefs and you were there Each time a wave occurred, what you don't know is that esoterically there were choices to be made. And sometimes the choices were to stay the same and sometimes the choices were to move forward. History unfolded until you got to 1987. That was the point at which this planet looked at itself and the vibrations were poignant with decision. And the higher selves of all humanity, all at the same time in a quantum state were polled, that is to say, you took a vote. And at that vibratory rate, the question was asked, do you wish to move into a new paradigm or stay the same? This was not a new question. This had been asked at the juncture of every vibratory potential. And you said, yes. That's when I came. That's when I started this journey, where I would come into the planet and ally myself with a human being for the first time. Crying, does that mean that's the first time that you'd ever channeled on the earth? Absolutely not. For I had come and I had gone, testing the waters. There was one even before my partner and my partner acknowledges and honors this life. His energy is even here now. And my partner speaks his name. His name is Frank. He helped start it all. Oh, there is much you don't know. And finally, as you see it, over 21 years ago, slowly my partner picked up this gauntlet to do what you see him do now. And that's not the story we came to tell you, for it's about what happened to you. A paradigm shift for the planet would absolutely create a situation where those who are in the business of fortune telling, the prophets of old, would have their information then voided. This would have to be the proof that there was a shift. And slowly, as time unfolded, humanity got to see this very attribute. Some were impressed, some were not. Some felt that things are just as they are and nothing changed at all. And others saw the profundity of all of it. For one by one, you got to see the prophecies of Scripture not happen. One by one you got to see all of those things which you were told potentially were there not happen. The indigenous, they had the systems of prophecy 
and they gave them to you. Some of them aligned with modern day prophets and those things did not happen either. Instead, you had other things take place that even today you do not see the synchronicity of. Some of them you consider negative for you don't understand what happens to the tree when it's time to prune it. And here you sit. 21 years or more after the fact of a shift that you allowed in a new energy that is building even as you sit here. There are those reading this for the first time. And that is why I'm going slow. The shift made a difference, dear ones. It is the first time in human history where you've decided to take your DNA and move it to a higher percentage of effectiveness where you're actually distributing a mastery upon the random non-protein encoded portion of it. Not seen chemically, but very much seen spiritually. For there are humans awakening all over this planet with a concept that God might be bigger than they were told. And years ago, my partner brought you the, the concept that the children of the planet might be evolving first, and they are. They're becoming slightly more quantum. Their DNA is different than yours in the spiritual quantum portions of it. The chemistry that creates the 23,000 genes of your body remains the same for your bodies remain the same and they will continue to look the same under the microscope but the instruction manual which is 90% of DNA which is non-protein encoded has changed and the children become more conceptual that is the attribute one going from linearity to quantumness. They are less linear and more conceptual and that is first noticed in their training and education. For the old paradigms of linear education are falling upon them unsuccessfully. They don't like it. A conceptual mind does not want a linear lesson. They want a conceptual lesson. And until you change the education to match the consciousness of those you are trying to educate, it's going to be a battle. Let this be heard to those who are of high consciousness in charge of education. The children will respond far better than you think. What does this mean to you today? As you sit here in this, we will call the great shift. Dear ones, you are in the middle of the beginning of the 2012 experience. It comes in very slowly. This 26,000 year cycle had the opportunity for this and the Mayans knew it. For that which is been described as fractal time, this vibrational shift has upon it the potential of the highest vibration humanity has ever seen. And you are raising yourself to the occasion and you will rise and we see it for more and more are coming forth with new ideas. Now let us make something clear. My partner goes slow with this. Listen to me. Blessed is the human being who finds the creator inside. No matter how they do it. Perhaps they're alone. And they realize something is different and they find they can love themselves more. 
and they've never heard of cryon or the new age or metaphysics or esoterics they are as blessed as you this is not about joining anything this is a human being evolving spiritually worldwide in the process of this you are going to see that which you call mainstream religion alter itself it's not going to go away it shouldn't blessed is the human being who finds the creator in their church and can sit and sing the songs and kneel at, at the place they wish to and find the love of God pouring into their heart and if it's through a prophet that told them about their mastery it is good enough for it changes the vibration of the earth just as you have with your epiphanies today we are saying do not then linearize and quantify who you believe is correct or not correct in this shift for there is no such thing in a quantum energy cry how can everybody be right <laughs> that is the lesson isn't it that is the lesson isn't it can you go there with me there will be those who will criticize others love you're not loving correctly they'll say you're not fitting into the doctrine correctly they'll say and I am telling you that the doctrine is about the love of God how you accomplish it is your path but we see it all as love those who would sit in a meeting like this are the forerunners of an energy that does not require organization or walls or buildings or doctrines or prophets it is a quantum energy an epiphany that is happening worldwide no organization no leadership and yet millions are awakening to a possibility they've lived before that they were their own ancestors that they could go into the Akash and improve themselves to make this planet vibrate higher this is an evolution of human nature itself and so here we are in the middle of the shift together even before I give you this practical information I tell you there is so much honor so much respect of humanity there is a family on the other side of the veil who knows you by the light name the light name not the human name spoken in words the light name your soul core energy the peace of God that you are is known by us and this is the point that as you push on the door and question who you are when you ask if you dare to ask God is there more than than I've been told and you feel something profound in your life perhaps even now feeling the vibration of healing energy pouring through you that's why you came dear I know why you're here or feel the the purpose of solution pouring through you right now I know why you're here dear one this is you pushing upon that quantum door the question is there more than I've been told and it leads you to what I would call the fast track to mastery it's different respected you are honored you are we wash your feet today because of it here's some practical information for you 
If you feel you are a light worker in this shift, I'm going to give you some advice. Do not evangelize it ever. Don't go after converts, for there's nothing to join here in this, a quantum energy of mastery. And you might say, well, crying, how, that's nice, but we want, we want others to know. We would love them to know what we know. There is a way. It is the way, the only way. Not a linear way, not an old paradigm, but a new paradigm in a quantum way, and I'll tell you how it works, and here it is. You take care of yourself. To the extent that there will be others around you at work, in family, that will see the change. They'll see that you don't anger as fast. They'll see that you are joyful in the face of challenge. They will see that you smile more. They'll see that you're not aging. They're going to come to you. They're going to come to you. And they're going to say, what is it you have? Because I want it. In the most common places on the planet, in your workplace, in your home, you with family, in the store, you'll be different. You'll be wiser. You will be more joyful of life. You won't look at the world and tremble in fear. You will expect good things. You will be a co-creator. Of your own reality you'll be in charge of yourself and that which used to be victimization will go away even the one in here who was abused as a child I know who you are dear <laughs> will be able to to dissolve the hate and see it for what it is blessed are you for you're doing the work. Maybe that's why you came. I know who you are. You want to drop that? Let's do it. So you'll walk out of here a whole different person. That's the ability of a master. They'll come to you. And when they do, don't necessarily give them a cryon book. <laughs> Let them grow into it. Sit with them and look at them and tell them you've experienced something that has changed your life. In advance, figure out what you're going to say, dear ones. Because an old paradigm does not always recognize a new paradigm. Unless you go slow. Unless you go slow. That may be the path of each of you. Figure out what you're going to say. You might say, I have discovered love in myself. That'd be a good way to start. And it's created a countenance which no longer worries. And is no longer anxious. And knows there is a bigger picture. And you're part of it. It creates a, a patient human being in linear time that waits for synchronicity. And that's the second attribute we wish to teach you tonight. Synchronicity is the key to manifestation. And you don't understand how it works. You want it fast, you want it quick, and when you don't get it, you often give up. I'm in an auditorium at the moment with many human beings, and I ask you a question. Is it possible you came tonight and yesterday for synchronicity? Perhaps there's someone here that you're supposed to meet that has a solution for a problem or a challenge that you came. And so I'm going to ask you, how many did you meet that you didn't already know? Not all 
of you did. And I want to tell you what that means. You're in the right place at the right time, and if you did not meet them and you were not aware that you even should, or using the synchronicity and the intuition you have, they'll just walk right out that door. And then you're going to have to develop new synchronicity, and it's going to have to happen all over again. Oh, it will, because you're creating it. You didn't miss out. But wouldn't you like to have it a little faster than not? <laughs> and that requires every single human being that goes to a gathering like this to put up their intuition antenna. Who am I supposed to talk to? Who am I supposed to meet? And it'll work. In this new attribute of the efficiency of DNA increasing, the quantumness of it manifests itself in increased intuitive power. Did you get that? Start using your intuition as your map, as your guide. You look at someone. Are you supposed to speak to them or not? And dear ones, if you're supposed to, they're not going to run away. They're not going to be offended. They're going to light up. They're going to light up. Because you are their synchronicity as well. Do you understand how this works? It's a beautiful thing. That's the teaching. To manifest in this way. And begin to use these new tools that have been given to you. Slowly. With integrity. And in the process, don't push human being wishes to push it forward for the human being's bias is that where time is always running out did you notice <laughs> when you were four when you were five impatient you were very much so for the holidays to come for the vacations for that time when you give gifts do you remember? You could hardly sleep. And it hasn't changed a bit. <laughs> it's built in. Absolutely built in. This is your bias. You work by the clock. Your cells work by the clock. Your consciousness works by the clock. As you quantumize yourself, you disengage the clock. And the world stops. And you don't care. And waiting is no longer an issue. It is what it is. You're delighted to just be. So you change the paradigm from doing to being. That's the advice for today. It's enough for you to absorb. that this shift is taking place in a way we said it would when we arrived. For all of these years, we have been telling you about something you created. Spirit is only watching you work, giving you the advice while you work, loving you while you work, being next to you, supporting you. Make no mistake about who is in charge human being who locks themselves in their room and waits for God to visit them with some miracle is going to be sad indeed. Loved every bit as any other human. Unlock the door, come out and push a little on synchronicity. And here's how you do it. By going to places like this. Meeting those of like mind. Aligning creating alliances with those who have the solutions for your challenges. They're here. And so with this we close. And with this we say to you that in this room still it is not too late. There are those who have come today to meet you. It's still not too late. 
And so we're in the last few minutes of a two-day event for you. And in a moment, you're going to stand and leave. It's still not too late. What if one of the synchronicities didn't involve a human being at all? What if one of the synchronicities was you with you? What if right now, before we go, you begin to see the synchronicity of energy? Could this be real? Could it be talking to you because we know your name? Do you understand that we are biased as well? We're biased in love. We want you to see what we know you can see. We want you to be able to change your biology. We want you to be able to see the gifts of your Akash. To finally understand that all of the work that you've done, old soul, over and over on this planet have been for a purpose and now you are in a state of vibratory shift where you can begin to work this puzzle. You can leave differently than you came. And we've said that before, have we not? In front of you are changes you cannot even fathom that are going to be happening in these next years. Do not fear that which is shift. Do not be in a state where any change at all is fearful to you. Look at it with the eyes of a quantumness. Where some things may appear negative. Until they repair themselves in a way that is greater than the existing problem. This may be cryptic to you now, but in retrospect you will understand what is being said. A paradigm shift of this magnitude is going to affect almost every part of the planet eventually. It's already affecting your weather. It's already affecting your financial institutions. You can see it everywhere. It is what you have created for you. And it will bring eventual consciousness change on the planet and peace on earth. Look for changes in the young people shortly in places you don't expect them. For they hold the key at the moment to pushing the envelope of the old paradigm. Go with them, agree with them, understand what they're doing and become their partners no matter what the age difference is. For they are allied to the shift and are the key to making it happen. And that is our advice. And that is our advice. We don't leave. Go with the love of God in your heart and know it is, it is the creator energy. And so it is.